So welcome back to my channel, this is Dom and um, I showed a video the other day where I was talking about my new project which is to work on a Norman army in Sicily. Um, so I bought um, a number of boxes as you saw from Conquest Games, um, plastic figures I've not previously um, had any of so I was intrigued to see what they're like. Um, the discount deal was very good indeed, so um, I thought, why not? Why not indeed? I don't want to spend a huge amount of money on on, on these figures because I'm not sh honestly sure how much I'll use them. They look nice enough in the box. Um, so I'm going to have a, have a look at them, basically. So I've got two boxes. Um, I've made up one box, so I know what they're like now. So within the box you get... Some bases, these are 50 by 50 or 25 by 50, um, which is pretty good for things like Hell Caesar, um, which is which is probably what I'm gonna do. Now inside you get enough cavalry here for 14 um, riders, and you get a wounded man, or a dead man by the look of it. He looks like he's seen better days. Um, Spruce took a little bit of yeah, it's it's weird. You, I wasn't sure how it worked exactly, but you get this group of uh, three horses. Then each of the other sprues has three. Yeah, so it's one, two, three, four, five. No, that's wrong. Yeah, five because there's one. One has slightly less. So this. No, tell a lie. I don't know what I'm doing. There are fourteen horses anyway. <laughs> <laughs> there are 14 horses in these boxes. Um, there are roughly, I think it's about three different poses, um, which is, let me just grab them from up here. Um, mainly two different types of horse poses. There they are. And the models aren't bad. You can see here on the sprues, they've got little bobbles, um, that go into the corresponding socket on the other side. So you've got the, the one side here and one side there. And, and then the head is separate. Now, that's not my favorite way of doing it. I prefer it when the horse head is sort of molded on one, one side of the body. And I think the join is better. Um, you can see here, it's okay actually. I mean, it, it, these have gone together actually pretty well. I was a bit concerned they'd have a bit of a gap there. There's a little bit of a gap round here. And getting the head to just sit perfectly on there was, was a little bit awkward. Um, yeah, I just wish they the head was moulded onto one side of the horse. It's probably just, you know, much simpler to do it this way for the moulder. Also, a lot of horses these days... Um, have a sort of strap that runs down here that sort of keeps the horse hides the the edge but these don't so you've got an edge there and you can also see the edge up its bum <laughs> so yeah, that gets a slight negative from me um i might see if i can do something to fill those gaps or just make them less obvious they might just disappear with the paint um We'll see, we'll see. But otherwise, they're nice horses. They're nice, nice, um, yeah, they're nice enough horses. They come together pretty well and they, they mold together really nicely. So, um, you got your 14 horses on these sprues. The cavalry sprues are, uh, let's put that one aside because that's slightly different. Three sprues have four men on each. Uh, their bodies are identical. So you've got one with the, um, well, two with the um, male armor with that sort of square that the Normans are renowned for um, in the center of the chest. One with uh, without that square and one in just plain, um, you know, no obvious armor. That's a bit of a shame really because these are mailed knights and you want them all to be armored. Um, so I'm disappointed there's, effectively you've got three here that haven't got any kind of mail on. Um, and it's not a big thing, but it's just slightly annoying. Um, but what's very annoying for me is that there aren't enough kite shields for each of the cavalry. 
So you've got three, six, nine, um, twelve, and there's fourteen figures. So you've got to have two that have round shields, and I don't want round shields. I want kite shields on all my figures. So that's really annoying. Um, also, I sound like I'm being really negative here about this. And they're not bad kits for the prices. They are not bad kits, but they they've got this tendency that cheaper kits have to have the the sprue connections to the pieces very very large and very tight so they're very difficult to cut out and so this sort of thing happens for me you can see the sort of dent there in the fit in the um in the shield there and all of them have got it because you try and cut with this, I cut with pliers and then I try and trim them down, but I always seem to get this sort of gouge in the shields and that's frustrating. I wish it didn't do that. But that said, I think there is plenty of variation on these figures. Um, you've got a variety of, of um, spears. Uh, one, two, three, six, nine, twelve spear. So you could put... 12 spearmen armoured, you've also got a standard if you want it, you've got a bugle if you want it, you've got a club um, if you want it. The club, I think, was a sort of scene, a, a, a sort of um, a thing of station, you know, sort of for the station, a higher station, higher status troops. You've also got about 12 different sword arms, which is nice. There's even an empty sword hand here with a, with a sword, which is somewhere, I've lost it already. Oh, there it is, um, which is separate. Now, I've used it on my dead body. Um, there's also a number of different head options, which is rather nice. Um, some of these are really nice, really nice. Um, there's the guy without any armour. Um, but these have all got diff slightly different helmets or different uh, coifs, just to add that variety, which I like. So you can, with the bodies you've got and the different... Uh, positions of the spears, swords, clubs, hel helmets. You've got enough variety to make these packs up in a different way and make everything look different, which is great. So I'm really pleased with that. Um, again, one of my frustrations with the shields particularly is uh, most of them have an arm welded on. Um, but then every so often there's one without it and there's a separate arm <laughs> here. So you stick the arm on, then you've still got to connect it to the shield. Why did they bother with that? Why didn't they just put this one to have an arm like that one does? It doesn't make sense to me at all. Just more fiddliness that just seems unnecessary, really. So I was a bit disappointed by that. Um, the Commander Sprue, I suppose this is Commander Sprue, has um, three different bodies. It has two in sort of quilted armour and one in mail. Um, and that's the sprue that has the club man, the bugle, and the um, standard. Um, but so you don't need to use that. But um, they, they, make, they make up really nicely. So let me just show you a couple I've made up already. There you go. That's the guy with the post box on his chest. And his uh, kite shield. Overhanded um, spear. This one's... So see, this one's slightly different. Shield's in a slightly different position. The um, spear's in a slightly different position. It's picked out two that don't actually look fairly similar. Here we go, there's another one. This guy is drawing back his, um, his, his spear, ready to sort of either jab it or to throw it even. Uh, he's got a different head, which is nice. These... Um, that's one of the other ones I've done. There's a couple of guys with swords. Oh, this one's already got a loose arm. Need to restick that. So there you go. He's got his sword arm pretty much straight up. This guy's drawing it back, ready to uh, ready to strike. He's also um, his face. You can actually see his mouth open like he's screaming as he charges. So there's a lot of different variations. I really like them for that. Um, so I'm not not too upset by that, and I think for the price, pretty good deal. 
Um, but as ever, the proof of the pudding is going to be in the eating. So let's get paying to them. All right, so update on the um, horses. They're largely done. I basically, you can see here, I, don't, I did something I don't usually do. I did them all en masse. Um, so because there weren't, there isn't much to these horses, they're actually pretty simple. Uh, all painted with contrast paint. I've got three greys, um, four black, and then the others are made uh, done with different versions of uh, of brown. Um, and I, you know, I think these contrast paints work so well on horses; it makes it so much quicker. Um, wasn't entirely sure what colour to do the reins and the bridles and stuff. Uh, but looking through a lot of the illustrations, they just seem to be leather. So um, I used um, Vallejo, what's this one called? Red leather, which I quite like as a colour, uh, and did all those. The saddle cloths underneath the saddles, again, I just did a variety of colours. I may, I need to check actually how, let's have a look, how clearly the riders, how much they cover. Yeah, pretty much cover those saddle cloths entirely. Oops, so dropping on the floor. Just trying to work out whether it's worth doing some patterns underneath. I might do actually. I think I'm working myself into a new job here. I might just do a little bit of um, patterns on the inside of those saddle cloths, just so that when the horses, when the riders are sat down on them, this is still showing through. And I want these to be quite ornate looking knights. So I think I'll do that next. Um, and then I'll give them a wash. And that'll be the horses done. And then we need to start on the riders. Back in a bit. So with the horses uh, pretty much done, you can see I put a wash over them. Uh, I used um, Dark Tone from Quick Shade. Um, sorry, from Army Painter. Um, which works quite nicely. On the greys it deadens them down. I probably will dry brush it a bit with uh, a white colour just to bring it back out. But for these other horses I think it works really nicely. Um, so I'm going to work on the, the riders next. So I've um, used um, oops, this one, uh, Warlord's uh, Wood Brown for the inside of the shields because generally they were wood. You can see the, the saddle uh, front and back, which I've also done there. Um, and I've done the, the base skin tone, which uh, is this uh, scale color pale skin. Now for the armor itself, they've all got mail largely. Um, so I think I'm just gonna do them gold mail uh, sorry, a silver male, normal. Um, and the way I'm going to do that, I'm going to undercoat them with uh, contrast basilicum grey and do that all over. And then I'm going to uh, use a, um, a silver over the top, just dry brushing that over the top. Because um, I like the effect of that. I'll probably do the helmets for... I don't know, I'm, I'm thinking about... I've seen lots of illustrations of helmets being painted and I'm kind of really look really thinking about making this unit very very bright given the fact that uh, the um, uh, the norm well basically the normans were fighting against the Saracens and the Saracens traditionally wore very bright clothing and something of the influence of the Normans of the Saracens would have rubbed off on their on the Normans almost certainly a lot of the illustrations I've seen um, are very very brightly dressed uh, Norman knights so that's what I'm going to do so I'm just going to do this for the basilicum brown all over the armor initially um, and then I'm going to work on doing um, the colors on the helmets and you can see they've all got little bits of uh, tunic poking down underneath the armor there and also their arms are bare uh, just have uh, not bare, they have uh, tunics pointing through. So I'll do that, and then a couple of them have these sort of quilted armor. So I will probably do that. Um, I need to check whether it's leather or whether it's a bronzy color, but 
we'll work on that. And there literally are a couple, I think there's four, who have no armour at all. So we'll leave them for the moment and do them the tunic colours. So back when the next stage is done. So they're coming together really nicely. Um, I'm very pleased with how these have uh, developed. Oops, drop a couple. I've done about eight of them so far. Um, I've kept to the idea of pretty bright colours on them. Um, which I'm really pleased with. You can see I've just um, uh, sort of drag brushed um, bright silver over the, that um, basilicum um, grey base colour. Um, the leggings are just a, I think a snake bite brown, I think it was, um, and then picked out the spurs and the stirrups. Obviously just used various bright colours on the helmets. Um, this guy, he's obviously not got any armour, he's just got a very bright yellow and green outfit on. Um, yeah, just really pleased with how these are coming together. The I used um, Little Big Man transfers. Now, Conqueror uh, models don't have any transfers, so I've had to use these are um, to fit Warlord ones, which look about the right sort of size, and, and they pretty much are. You can see they just about fit on. Um, if I'm sorry, that one is a Warlord metal figure. Um, you can see here this one, it fits on pretty well. The only issue is they don't have any, um, these models don't come in with any shield bosses. So I was debating whether I should just paint over them or whether I just leave them and try and darken them up a bit with a sort of flat silver hole. I think that's what I'm going to do. So I think painting them would actually make them stand out too much. I don't think it would fit in perfectly. So I think I'm just going to leave them as they are. At least to see how it goes. Um, so yeah, that's the f that's eight of them done. They say this one's a metal warlords uh, one, but these are two, four, six, seven of the seven of the plastic ones. I'm quite happy. So they're obviously stuck down now on the horses, super glued down. Um, I think what I'm going to do is going to use a dark wash on the armour and then on the brighter and probably on the weapons as well I should think and then on the lighter bits I'm going to use um, probably going to go with, with light tone and see how that comes out um, because I don't want to lose the vibrancy of the, of the models uh, but I do want to get a bit of wash on them so um, yeah that's what we'll do Come back and see what it looks like after that. Right, so these have all had the wash applied now. Um, and you can see I've also done the basing. I've just used normal sort of polyfiller just to sort of hide the pudding basin uh, bits for the, for the bases. Um, stuck them down on their pairs. I really like these models. I mean, they're, they're a reasonable price and they're actually very nice to paint up. Really good fun to paint up. Um, yeah, apart from the issue with the shields um, and also the fact they haven't got the bosses. I'm still not sure whether I should try and... If I was good with green stuff, I'd mould a little bobble or two and stick them in the middle and paint them up. I might still try that. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I don't want to ruin them, but i um, quite happy with how these have turned out. So... Anyway, see that's the first eight of them done. Um, here we go. As I said, I kept to this sort of bright colour scheme um, and I'm quite pleased with them. Um, yeah, that's the dead guy. I'm just going to use him as a, as a marker of some sort. So I think they're pretty good. I'm quite happy with how they've come out. So I'm going to move on. I've got the next eight to do here. Well, however many it is to do here. Um, that'll get my first sort of regiment, if you like, pulled together. Um, these need a varnish. Well, they need the basing put on um, and varnish. And I don't think I'm going to do my normal dry brush afterwards. I'm going to keep them bright because I want to keep them bright. Um, <clears throat> sorry, that's my echo going off. So I'll do that and we'll come back and show how it looks. So... 
all the washes are done. Um, and what I thought I'd show you is um, the way I'm doing the basing on these. Slightly different to how I normally do it. I'm quite a lazy baser usually, although the effect is quite good. Um, so what I've done, you saw the plastic bases that they were already mounted on. Obviously put the second one beside it, um, stuck them down with super glue so they're nice and solidly done. And then what I've done is just build up the base um, just using um, polyfiller. Um, let that harden solid as a rock and then I've used um, Iraqi sand just washed it all over the top just to sort of give it that sandy underneath look which is what I want and then I've started to well basically just stuck a number of um, tufts on this base using super glue um, and I find super glue is the best way, even though they are self adhesive. I think they eventually do seem to, a lot of them seem to just work their way loose. So I like to use a bit of super glue just to really stick them down. So next up, what I'm going to do, got my trusty PVA glue. I'm just going to generously put PVA glue in the gaps between all these bits of bushing. And that way, the doesn't matter if you slop it on the actual bushes itself. Oh, that's coming out, hopefully that is. Um, if it sort of catches up in there, it doesn't matter because the effect's going to work quite well. I want it really gloopy. I'm using this pure out of the box, out of the, out of the box, out the uh, tub. I'm not watering it down at all because I want the gloopiness. It clear, it's it dries clear so you don't have to worry too much about extra you know glue slopping around everywhere I like something like super glue which does there we go I'll just finish this filler off there we go I can see a bit in the middle of that I'll just do that so you're going to try not to get it on the figure because that would be annoying there we go oops I'll just stick that in there right here he is I've got my pot of this is a real sandy basing material I think this is a Luke's APS but forgive me I can't remember which one it is um, I'm just gonna pile it in like so back to the bottom just to get rid of the excess and there you go and I kind of like this eff effect when it dries um, it just there's a bit of the yellow a bit of the sandy yellow comes through from underneath you've got the bushes peeping out and it just looks like a really arid sort of almost deserty feel which I'm going for Sicily so that's what I'm looking for so let me finish the rest and I'll show you what they look like and there they are finished. There we've got uh, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 15, 16 um, Norman and Knights. Um, 16 because the box set had 15 and this guy on the end is actually a Warlord's Metal. I bought a couple of command packs in their sale. Um, and it fits in really nicely actually, you can't really tell the difference. I have to say these um, Conqueror... Um, Norman's actually really good. My, my one criticism is the, is the shields. Um, and I was thinking, should I use a little bit of green stuff to um, build up the pommels? And in the end, I thought, I'll just see what it's like just painting them. Um, and that's what I've done. And I think it actually looks okay. Um, maybe I'll go back in and do that at some point. But that's my only criticism. The shields, A, getting them off the sprue was a bit of a nightmare. But also... Um, that um, lack of pommels, uh, pommels, bosses um, was a problem. But I think the actual figures are really nice to paint. Uh, they come up pretty well um, for cheap plastic. I mean, and they are pretty cheap. I think they're excellent. Um, you can see I've used the little big man uh, shield transfers. Um, they are the Warlord ones um, and they largely fit. I had to do a little bit of um, 
painting around them just to sort of improve the quality uh, or just improve the fit sorry um, but I think you can't really tell the difference now they've all had a wash and um, a varnish um, yeah so I'm not going to dry brush them I often dry brush my figures after I've varnished these ones I'm not going to I've tried to do um, the Hauteville um, standard uh, freehand it's a sort of it's a diagonal white stripe with red checkers on it, um, which is quite tricky to draw, um, paint, especially because that banner is sort of rippling a bit in the wind, but I think it'll, it'll do, it'll do. We'll see, I might just black it, I might just <laughs> chicken out and do it all white instead, white and, white and blue, um, but anyway. But that's the first group of um, Norman Knights. I base them in the end, I just base them how... Uh, with the uh, uh, basing that came in the box um, rather than faff around with the different rule systems. Um, the beauty of it, obviously I've got these four individuals, these are double based, these are individuals, so if it is a casualty removal system, I've got some spares in the old style just to swap them in. Um, yeah, really pleased with that, really pleased indeed. So as well as the um, 16 figures there, um, there's also the casualty figure, who uh, I'm just going to use him basically as a, a casualty marker. Most of the games I play, you need a dice to mark it, so I'll just put a little holder or something in there um, for the dice to hold, to sit on. Um, these are the other um, um, Warlord uh, metals that I was the, the extra guy was from. It was the three-pack um, Norman Commanders. So I've done these two up as the sort of command sprue, if you like. Um, just the trumpeter and the and the commander himself on a circular base. Yeah, quite pleased. And, and as I said before, they fit in pretty well scale-wise with the rest of the Norman cavalry. So really pleased with how they came out. And uh, that's the first stage of the Norman army with um, some knights done. I'm quite pleased I am too. So there you go. There is the first units of uh, my Norman in the Sicily army. Um, and jolly nice they are too. I have to say, really, really enjoyed doing them. Really good fun. Pleased I went for a brighter colour on all the uh, helmets and things. I think it just adds a little bit of spice to the army. Um, and um, yeah, I'm just I'm absolutely delighted with these plastics. I was a bit kicking myself when I heard that Vitrix were going to be doing some Normans, um, and I may yet get some Vitrix Normans. Um, but actually, having painted these up, quite happy with them. They, you know, for the price, I think they're excellent. I've got another box to do, and obviously, then I've also got the infantry and the Griffin Beast uh, Black Friday sale. I picked up a number of Saracen troops as well to go with it. So. This arm is going to be fun. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. Um, yeah, and we'll carry on the journey building a Norman army in Sicily. And uh, hopefully have some fun along the way. And hopefully at some time it might actually see the table in some sort of game. I hope you're staying well. I hope you're safe. I hope um, you manage to keep yourself busy. And you're just staying sane in this weird, weird world that we're in. Um, yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll see you again soon. This is Dom, signing out.